What's up, Nightwalkers? Okay, in this video, I'm gonna be going over pulling out an L3 uh, image tube that's in 11.769 format, which uh, that's, that's a, a format of an image tube that has a gain control pigtail that comes off the tube. And it's the most common tube, the most common uh, type of tube that you're gonna find inside of a PVS-14 because PVS-14s have gain control. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna show you how to pull the tube out of this thing, how to pull the pigtails off, and then how to install it inside something like this Anvis 9. Um, and then going in this Anvis 9, it's gonna be the same as if it was uh, an RNVG or a Mod 3 without gain control or a DTMVG, anything else like that that uses a 10.160 uh, format image tube. You're gonna need some pretty basic tools. You just need an Allen key. Uh, I don't remember the size to be honest with you, but if you got a key set, you'll figure it out. Uh, you need a plastic pry tool, uh, something that's not gonna scratch or mar up anything. And then you're gonna need some type of uh, a lensed removal tool, um, or you could buy one of those fancy actual image tube, uh, you know, removal type tubes for taking off the rings and pulling the tubes out. Uh, but this thing right here, I mean, I bought this uh, universal lens, lens removal tool off of Amazon. I'll put the link down below. I think it cost me like 15 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. And they give you these different fittings on the end. Uh, so it has different attachments that go inside the end here. Um, this one, you just use this offset size or like two small uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. And that's all you need to remove the rings um, to get the image tube loose out of the housing itself. Now to get started, first thing you want to do is remove the battery. I already popped the battery out of this thing, but I'll just do a double check, make sure it's all clear, no battery inside. Uh, screw that puppy back on. Uh, it does help if you turn the uh, objective lens counterclockwise, just get it so it sticks out a little bit. And then you're going to hold down the lock ring for the, for the eyepiece itself. And you can see it right here. You got these two pieces. You're just going to hold down the lock ring and you're going to turn this counterclockwise. And it does help if you adjust this and bring this thing out so that way it's away from the tube. Um, so anyways, you're going to undo this piece. Just go counterclockwise until it comes off. And when you get to the end, it might, it might grab a little bit, so you just have to pull it. And there you go. Set it aside someplace safe. Now with the eyepiece off, you'll see the ring inside. And you'll see these two slotted sides on each, on each end, 180 de degrees apart. And that's where this tool comes in. So you'll just slide it in there, you know, just be careful because you don't want to scratch the, the screen here on the tube. So then you'll slide that into the notches there on the ring and you'll turn it counterclockwise and then you'll fill it loosen up. And you don't have to keep going crazy on this thing because uh, basically as soon as you get it loose, then what I'll do is I'll get my fingers inside here and then just move the ring the rest of the way. And that way I'm not having this tool inside there uh, with the potential for it to slip and, and damage the uh, image intensifier. And once it gets loose, it'll just pop out like that. And then the next thing you gotta do is pop out the light pipe. And it's a, you can't, a little difficult to see, but it's a, it's a clear plastic uh, piece that goes in here. And what this thing does is, is when you have your IR illuminator on or your low battery light, um, it'll basically flash a light on here, then the pipe lights up and so you can see inside your eyepiece. And so you take your plastic pry tool and you just pop this thing out. And then there's the light pipe, it just comes right out. And now the tube's loose. And then the next thing I do is um, I'm gonna unscrew or loosen up the bolts that hold the battery compartment on. And so when you do that, you just turn these counterclockwise and um, you just take them out. And you got them on all four ends. So you got one there, one here, one there, and one on this side. It's, uh, it's pretty clear where they're at. All right, so now with the battery compartment off, once you get these screws out, you wanna open it uh, very gently. You don't wanna go crazy because you got these ribbons um, attaching everything in here. So your gain pigtail is attached here by a ribbon, and then you have another ribbon here from the circuit board going to, uh, to the housing on the inside. And then this is where having your plastic pry tool comes in. Um, I'll try to get in here close so you can see it. But basically you got this little square uh, rectangular board right here. And that's, that's what the gain uh, pigtail attaches to on the circuit board. So you take your pry tool, you just go under here, and you just go nice and gent gently, and you'll pry it up, and it'll just pop loose. 
just like that. And so now I've got my gain pigtail loose and now I can go ahead and slide the image intensifier out of the, uh, out of the housing itself. And you just kind of push it in this way from the backside and then you just gently help guide this uh, gain pigtail out of it. So there's your um, 11769 L3 image intensifier with the gain pigtail on it. Now this is where I've seen some people get confused about how you can modify these tubes to work inside of something like this Anvis or an RMVG or whatnot that doesn't use a gain control. Now as long as it's an L3 tube and it's a, it's a modern one, you know, it's not one from, you know, the 90s or whatever, um, all you got to do is there's a little plastic, uh, or I should say sticker that goes around the, uh, this part of the tube and it gives, you know, the serial number um, and other identifying, um, you know, information for the tube itself. And it's just a sticker. So all you got to do is you take your uh, pry tool and you just gently move the sticker up. And once the sticker is raised, now you can see the, uh, the pigtail and you can see where it goes. Let me see if I can get this thing close enough to the camera here with it focusing. So there you go. There it is right there. And then all you gotta do is gently just pop it out. And just like that, I've removed the gain pigtails from the L3 tube. No cutting needed, nothing at all. Let me see if I get this close enough for the camera to focus. But you can see it has these two little plugs and those just get inserted inside uh, the tube like I showed you where they pulled out from. And then there's your pins on the other side uh, your four pins that go inside the uh, circuit board uh, here on the battery compartment. So then you just want to put this aside, put this someplace safe. Uh, what I do is I use um, a large enough, you know, round container like this and I put them inside a baggie and I just keep them inside there and that way, you know, they're not going to get crushed because last thing you want to do is, is bend one of these pins or break them off or whatever. Um, if you ever want to reuse this tube in 11769 format. The next step is taking your tube and sticking it inside your new housing, um, new whatever the case is, you bought it used. And all you wanna do is repeat the process of removing the eyepiece um, off of the housing where you're gonna put the tube into. And you just, you know, same thing, hold the lock ring, turn the lens counterclockwise. And I already had this one pretty loose, as you can tell. This pops off, you look inside of it, and it's pretty basic. There's nothing you gotta worry about. Since it's, uh, so there's no gain control, you don't have to worry about feeding in um, the pigtail anywhere inside the bridge, nothing like that at all. Now, when you look inside of it, you're going to see uh, a little stud, and that's the locating stud uh, for the image tube. So right here is a little notch. Let me get it close enough to the camera. All right, so you see this notch right here on this side? So you got this notch, and you just have to line up the notch uh, to the stud that's inside the housing. And, um, and then that way the tube gets located properly inside the assembly. Now you just slide it in there. It might take a couple of tries to get it lined up. Um, if you have that happen to you, you'll hear it pop in there like it did right then. Uh, but if it doesn't do that, you could just turn it upside down. You know, obviously hold your hand out here so you don't drop the tube out and you can just gently tap it until the tube, um, you know, comes out from the bottom. Now with these, uh, with these anvises, um, you don't necessarily have to put the light pipe in it. You know, I, I don't. So you just can take your ring um, you know, the tube lock ring that's going to keep the tube from sliding around. You take that and you just drop it in there. Uh, make sure it's nice and even if you can. Take your tool, you know, your lens, universal lens adapter, or if you got one of them fancy um, actual specific tools made for this, then you could use that. And then what I do is I go counterclockwise once and just make sure I got it lined up. And then you just tighten it down. And I, I don't go too tight. I don't go crazy on it. I just get it nice and snug. Because you got to remember the, the job of this ring is just to keep the tube from moving around and losing contact. So just get it a little snug. 
and then I'm good to go. Um, now one thing you can do, I didn't do it this time, but you can just use some, some of this uh, air duster and dust off the tube on the, uh, on the front side, then on the back side, uh, I'll give it a, a quick little dust like that. And then you take your eyepiece and you basically just screw it back on. Uh, at this point of it, you just gotta be careful that you don't cross thread it. So same thing, I go counterclockwise and then I just make sure I, I'm pushing, uh, put even pressure on it and then just go clockwise until you fill the threads go and then you're in business. And I hold the lock ring down and get it set back up. Now it's all nice and tight. Because I'm, uh, because I'm painted with my, uh, my housing, it's pretty easy for me to line up uh, where it belongs at. Uh, otherwise you can make hash marks on your housing uh, just to make sure that you get it set back where it was originally. Um, if you wanna keep your same settings. Uh, I'm not as concerned about keeping my numbers on the diopter uh, because I'll just adjust it till it looks right for my eyes and that's always done the job for me. Um, now this isn't the, uh, you know, necessarily the, the most professional way of, of installing it. I'm not sure how they do it inside labs or at L3 or at ITT or whatever, uh, but this works. You know, you will lose your nitrogen uh, purging if you had your unit nitrogen purged. Um, there are some DIY options on how you could do it in terms of, uh, you know, removing the, uh, the purge screws and then spraying in something um, to basically recreate it. Um, if you're not living, you know, where it's 100% humidity all the time, um, even if you do, I've seen plenty of guys do the same type of DIY stuff at home and not have any issues of the lenses fogging up on the inside. Um, I personally haven't had that happen. And, you know, I'm in a climate where, you know, we get, we get rains, we get snow, so we have high humidity. I haven't had a problem with these things fogging up on me at all. Uh, biggest thing is I'm wearing gloves because you don't want to get grease and uh, skin oil and stuff like that on, on the lenses or on the image tube itself. It just helps to keep it a little bit more sanitary. And um, that's about it. So I just basically took my PVS-14 11769 image tube, removed the pigtails, and installed it inside this Anvis 9. And this thing will work just fine. All right, so with these Anvises, there's no power, internal power. So you got to take a cop, something like this cops that have, has uh, the double A's in it to power up your Anvis 9. Pop it in. And just like that, I got power. That's how easy it is to get these things going.